good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today something quite intriguing has happened in the Armory. The Lighthouse auction section has opened up today, and sure enough, they are offering the Musashi, the Tier 9 Japanese Premium Battleship, in auction. Now, for those that don't know, the Musashi was originally the replacement free XP ship for the Missouri way back when they finally removed Missouri. She was, I think, the same 725, 750,000 free XP uh, ship that replaced the Missouri, although she doesn't have Missouri's economy. She has, by then, they managed to figure out a, a proper turn on economy, so she has that economy. She doesn't earn quite as much as the Missouri does. She still earns quite a bit, though, just by the nature of being, you know, Yamato class. She has nine 18.1 inch guns, which means that she can overmatch 32 millimeters of armor. Um, the main differences between the Yamato and the Musashi is that uh, the Musashi is essentially the early war vet version of the Yamato. This is how the Yamato classes were originally kitted out and sent out into service. They had um, the, what, four triple 155mm turrets rather than that mountain of AA that the Yamato has. If you take a look at the Yamato, that is the latest version of the Yamato class. That's how she was kitted out when she got sent out for Operation Ten Go. So again, quite literally the latest version of the Yamato in the war. And the Masashi has, I think, 1.9 or 1.8 Sigma instead of Yamato's 2.1 Sigma. But more on the Masashi here in a moment. Let's talk about the auction. So when you go and you open up the auction, there's actually this little tab at the top that's highlighted about the rules. And the rules for the auction have changed. And when I originally looked at that, I was thinking, oh, crap, this is terrible. They're probably uh, redoing how you get your, your credits or doubloons back. For the for uh for the auction but no it's actually a pretty darn good change so uh they clarified now that the highest and earliest bid win because i'm sure there's probably quite a few um players that guests made around the same amount of doubloons or other resources and they all dump them into the armory fairly quickly so if there's let's say a thousand lots of the musashi and um say a thousand and five hundred players put um thirty eight thousand to blooms and thirty eight thousand is the winning number then the earliest thousand that put in the, those thirty eight thousand to blooms are the ones that are going to win the masashi so that's how that works and also there's this interesting part here called single price auction so they state once the lighthouse auction results have been summed up the highest bids win in the case of equal bids, the bid that was placed earliest wins. However, all winners will only pay as much as the lowest winning bid for the selected lot. Any excess will be returned to their accounts. Each winner obtains one bundle. So that means is that if you want a Musashi and you dump 50,000 doubloons into the auction, and the winning bid is, let's say, 40,000 doubloons, everyone pays 40,000 doubloons, and you get a refund of 10,000 doubloons if you put in 50,000 into the auction. That's great. I like that. That's fantastic. I mean, because there was, I'm sure, some players dumping like 60,000 doubloons. I heard someone dumped in like um, 75,000 for the Ruprecht when the Ruprecht was in uh, auction for early access, which, which I think that's absolutely insane to do that. 75,000 doubloons for a tier 9 tech line ship. That's a little crazy, my guy, but you do you. So, yeah, an excellent change. Definitely a highlight. Um, and, of course, if you don't win, you get your your dubs back. I'm assuming that the Musashi is going to be for doubloons. They don't state here what she's going to be going for in the armory itself, but it's a pretty safe bet it's going to be doubloons because, of course, Wargaming wants to make money off of this event. So, next question is, do you really want a Musashi? I'm sure a lot of you are probably saying, well, yes I do. I, I very much want a Musashi. It's first off a historical ship. Most of you collectors out there, there that don't have her probably will, will be participating in this event. Um, she's still in the Christmas Containers event for this year, I do believe, so you could potentially pick her up there for a little bit cheaper. Uh, again, again, depending upon just how this auction goes and how many premium ships you already have in port. But like I was saying earlier, this is an early war Yamato that's down tier to tier 9 and takes a hit to her accuracy for that. And also she has like no A8. 
Like, the A rating on this ship is, is, I think, like, 40 or 50 something? Yeah, it's 47. And you guys have seen, when we do the ship reviews, and we see the ships with, like, 80 and 90 AA, I'm like, yes, that's not, actually not really that good. You can imagine what a ship with 47 AA is like. Especially against, like, super carriers like the United States and um, Eagle. Again, I think it's funny that the Masashi, a, a ship that didn't even really have much A uh, mounts on it, has to face a, a ship like the United States and face jets. But anyway, so she doesn't have any AA, essentially. And that, that, that knock at her Sigma. So the Japanese battleships, their thing up the line is that they have either a large number of large caliber guns or a small number of, I'm sorry, a large number of medium caliber guns or a small number of large caliber guns for their tier, along with normally higher than average Sigma or accuracy. And where that gets balanced out in is their dispersion uh, model. Their, their dispersion model is really wonky. It's this weird, like, five-star uh, pattern that it's not like the, the Americans, that's, that's, a, that's a nice oval, or even like the um, Soviet battleships, which normally, ha normally have pretty nice horizontal dispersion. It's really all over the place, but in the Yamato's case, the high sigma and her good accuracy make up for that. In the Masashi here, you, you lose the high sigma. 1.8, 1.9 sigma, I I'm pretty sure it's 1.9. It's like average sigma for a tier 9 uh, battleship, of course, you know, depending upon what ship you're talking about. Um, but it's not like way up there, like 2.1 sigma is on the Yamato. So what that leads to is pretty frustrating salvos, as you can see here in the gameplay you're watching in the background, and I'm not saying I'm like some sniper in terms of accuracy, but just look at the dispersion. It's really all over the place for a ship that has uh, only nine guns. And you do you do get a pretty quick load time though, you can uh, get it cranked down to uh, around 20, I think it's 26, 27 seconds with the module equipped, uh, which for a ship with nine 18 inch guns that's a pretty nice reload time so that does kind of make up for it um but just like the yamato 2 you're gonna have a lot of overpins in this thing a lot of overpins in the masashi even more so in the yamato because the main reason a lot of players want to get a musashi is because of that tier 9 rating for two main reasons first one is that you can bully the absolute crap out of tier 7 ships this is a ship this Musashi with 18.1 inch guns, which is enough to overmatch the 32 millimeter threshold, which is the last major threshold in the game, can see tier 7 ships. That's right. Any of you that have played tier 7 and come across this ship have probably looked once or twice at your um, at your stat screen. Make sure you're not in a, uh, a tier 10 game with the, the leaderboard screen, not the stat screen, my bad. Uh, but yeah, you, you have to fight this thing in Colorado sometimes. Which is not fun being in the Colorado, but it, it is good fun being the Yamato in a tier 7, I'm sorry, the Masashi in a tier 7 game. Because you really don't care about anyone's armor at that point, and you just bully those tier 7 battleships out of existence. Same with the cruisers too. Well, on the flip side too, you're overpinning them a lot more. So you have this annoying 5-star um, dispersion pattern having to deal with getting tons of overpins or just barely missing the ship because, again... The dispersion's not that great. But sure, you know, you can bully tier 7s. And when the stars align, you get those good salvos. You can find yourself deleting tier 7 ships for pretty much all their health in one salvo. But on the flip side, too, how often are tier 9s actually top tier now? It's not that much. But granted, that is where the second part of wanting it to be at, at a, wanting the uh, Musashi to be a tier 9 comes into play at because you get that tier 9 economic boost from when you're fighting uh, tier 10 and super ships. If you guys don't know, anytime you're doing damage to a ship that's a tier above you, you get a little bit of boost to your economic income. It's like, um, for one tier difference, it's like a, a 0.2 increase. And then for like a two tier difference, it's a 0.5 times increase. So when you're just fighting super ships in the Masashi, which has 18.1 inch guns, which can still do a lot of damage to super ships, um, you're making quite a few credits there. And sure, she's great for that. She's still a pretty darn good credit farmer because, again, you still have 18 inch guns. They're still very large guns. And you still do quite a bit of damage in this ship. But, I mean, for me, I've always said, you know, 
it's nice that it's a tier nine premium, and you know it, it, it is fun to go and crush some tier seven players' hopes and dreams, you know, in the Masashi. But at the end of the day, uh, you can buy the Yami perma camo and make a ton of credits like that with 18-inch guns that are way more accurate than the Musashis, and you actually have AA, you know, it's not an AA barge by any stretch of the imagination, the Yamato, but it still has AA. Uh, granted, with the change coming to the economic system, you won't be able to do that anymore with the Yamato, so that probably does make the Musashi a little bit more valid in my book, but to go and dump, potentially, I, I would say this ship isn't being given away for anything less than, like, God, probably like 40k dubs, I would imagine. There's so many players out there that want this ship. The history buffs, the farmers, the weebs, the weebs really want this ship. So you gotta watch out for them. And if you haven't been able to tell by the Azure land event, them weebs got some deep ass pockets apparently. So yeah, this is gonna be a very expensive ship in the auction. But I mean, hey, if you want it, go for it. Just keep in mind. You're going to be not in Tier 7 games most of the time. Um, I played like four matches trying to get into a Tier 7 game, and I had one out of the four, which is 25%. That's not bad. But, shoot, that's a lot a lot better than I'm normally doing in Tier 9 shows. So you have to deal with super ships. You're going to deal with CVs, Soviet CVs, super carriers. Uh, the dispersion's aggravating, and it's not as accurate as the Yamato. You can go talk to any Yamato player. Yamato, even with the legendary module that cranks the dispersion down by an additional uh, 10%, 11%, is still a frustrating ship to play at sometimes because of the dispersion. So just keep that in mind. I mean, again, if you want to go for it, go for it. Cheer money. Have fun. I'll be watching from the sides because I was fortunate to get to pick mine up for free XP back in the day. But yeah, I do think it's very good that they're bringing her back. They're offering her in this way. The auction's one of the best ways they can do this too because, again... If you don't get it, you don't lose anything. I think it's a very, very, very good thing that they're bringing her back in this manner. Um, again, I really like that they they changed it to where everyone pays for the minimum bid now, and you don't have that one guy that dumped 80k doubloons into the, the the event that lost 80k doubloons for one tier nine ship, and at the end of the day, a digital item. So there is that. So guys, let me know what you guys think about this in the comments down below. Hope you're having a wonderful Thursday. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel. We're on our way to 40,000 subscribers, and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week, and I hope to catch y'all in the next one.